hi a very big hi to all my students of drs international school and uh, today i have a meditation for you and this meditation i believe is very relevant to all of you because it is a meditation on how to stop procrastination and for some reason or the other i have been putting off the shoot of this video for quite a long time so uh, don't worry all of us are in the same boat and today we will do a quick meditation together on how we can become more efficient at putting off procrastination itself and not putting off the important work which we are supposed to do so having said that let's get ready for today's meditation class but before we do and as i keep repeating to all of you that posture and breathing can really make a big difference to our entire meditation experience so let's just sit comfortably wherever we are so i would suggest that you pause this video right now and go and find a place for yourself inside your homes where you can be more comfortable you can find a nice firm surface to sit on if you want you can sit on a chair and if your feet don't go off to sleep then you can sit like me with your legs crossed on the hard floor or on your couch or your bed but as you sit along this meditation i want you to keep your spine erect and your entire body relaxed If your eyes are open you can now just start to soften your gaze and slowly slowly you may just close your eyes Now just keep your hands comfortably on your knees I like to keep my hands on my knees facing up with the palms of my hands facing up to the sky and my fingers slightly curled in so that there is no tension there just work on keeping your entire body relaxed especially your shoulders your arms your forearms and your hands and also your fingers just relax that entire body out for just 5 to 7 minutes okay and keeping your eyes closed at the same time Now I will not ask you to really manipulate your breath today so just carry on with the normal pace of your breath children But because we are trying to meditate together just try to make that breathing of yours slower and deeper So every time you take that inhale try to go a little more deep than usual And every time you exhale try to exhale a little more slowly that's it so you take a slightly deeper inhale all the way right up to your belly filling up your entire lungs and you exhale slightly more slowly than normal that's it if you can maintain that much we are good to go together just take a deeper inhale slightly deeper than the one you took before and exhale slightly more slowly than the last exhale that's it taking a deeper inhale than the one taken before all the way in through your nose and gently breathing it all out and slower than before wonderful all of you are great i always knew that the senior section of drs international school was bright smart and intelligent and of course independent you're just living up to your promise living up to the image of all of you that i have in my mind already so i'm so so proud of all of you now just carry on with this same trend of breathing okay every time you breathe in a little more deep 
and every time you breathe out a little more slow because where's the rush what's the rush all of us are cooped inside our homes during this lockdown working from home staying at home time seems to have paused suddenly for all of us and the best part about this lockdown is that there is no rush anymore in life we can just sit back relax take a deep breath in go for a slow exhale because before the lockdown there were times when we used to get so caught up in our work and so busy that we did not even have 5 minutes to ourselves to just sit back and breathe deeply how bad was that and now we have time time to breathe time to do these quick 5 minute meditations time to take care of ourselves of our families our parents time to take care of our homes taking part in all the household chores these small small things which we were not able to do earlier children we are now able to do and do them together as a family and these small small things are eventually teaching us how to appreciate the small small things in life things we usually overlooked before the lockdown arrived things which we usually took for granted before the lockdown arrived and now that we are all really locked up inside our homes we are beginning to realize and appreciate the beauty of the small things in life things like taking care of each other things like washing up after doing our work things like taking care of the kitchen things like washing our own utensils after eating small small things doing those small caring things for our parents those small gestures of care and kindness all these small small gestures make us realize how beautiful life is and how you remember we used to complain about each and every small thing we used to complain at the drop of a hat before the lockdown came into our lives and now we don't anymore because we are beginning to realize the true beauty of life and how the true beauty of our life lies in the small small things which we do in our day to day life and how these tiny teeny tiny things that we used to complain about earlier don't really matter anymore if we look at the vastness of the universe if we look at how vast the universe is in terms of uh, space and time we realize how tiny our troubles have actually become and we've stopped complaining about them so although the lockdown may be a little inconvenient for all of us every once in a while and that's okay because that's happening to everybody but i believe that today is the time for all of us to sit down together and just take a couple of minutes here to realize all the good things which the lockdown has taught us has made us realize all the good things that we have ended up realizing about the beauty and the simplicity of life in general how we are beginning to appreciate each and every aspect of our life as well as the lives of all those around us we are beginning to understand the true value of love kindness and compassion so any time there is a problem in life there is also a solution any time there is a problem in life it is not just doom and gloom and all bad surely surely there is something good in it something good which we can extract absorb like a sponge and learn from it and that is exactly what we are doing during this lockdown all cooped inside our homes together we may all be distanced out spaced out but we are all still connected digitally and we can share all these beautiful experiences with each other through technology and we should be thankful for that 
So I hope that during all this time that I have been chatting with you, you have been breathing in a little more deep and breathing out a little more slow. Now just continue the same pattern of breathing, my dear students of DRS. Keeping your spine erect. I hope you are not slouching. Just check your posture here. Now before we start this actual meditation, let's talk a little about procrastination. Let's not just talk. Let me talk. And allow yourself to listen. Keeping your eyes closed and carrying on with the same pattern of breathing. So I'll not talk about you. I'll just tell you about myself, my personal experiences. Why do I procrastinate? Like I told you, I have been procrastinating this video for quite some time as well. So usually in my life, what I have realized is that I usually procrastinate when I doubt myself, doubt my abilities, when I feel that I may not be able to perform as well as I expected, when I feel that I may fail in doing some task or activity and I don't expect myself to fail. So when I fear failure, I procrastinate. When I feel that I may not be able to live up to certain expectations which people have of me, when I feel that I may not be able to live up to the expectations which I have for myself while doing a particular task, that's when I procrastinate. So any task or any challenge or any activity that sometimes tends to intimidate me or overwhelm me, any activity that I think about and I say to myself that maybe I may not be good enough, feelings of self-doubt, feelings of low self-esteem, feelings of low self-confidence, you know, when I go through emotions like these and when I start questioning my own abilities, when I feel that I may not be able to live up to other people's standards or I may not be able to live up to my own standards or when I feel that I may not be able to perform well or when I feel that I may eventually fail, that is when I procrastinate. Then there are times that certain tasks seem to be too big for us. They seem to overwhelm us, intimidate us. That is also when we try to put it off indefinitely, procrastinate indefinitely. So a big part or a big chunk of meditation is all about sitting back, relaxing, allowing our minds to just become still. And a big part of meditation is all about becoming more aware, more conscious, more mindful of our own selves, becoming more aware of our own consciousness in this universe and also becoming aware of our own thoughts in our minds. Just sitting back, allowing our minds to become still and just observing our thoughts, analyzing our thoughts, realizing our thoughts. And when we procrastinate, these are the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions which are exactly running in our mind at that time. The feelings that I just spoke about, feelings of self-doubt, feelings of low self-esteem, feeling that we may not be able to live up to a situation, feelings that we may not be able to perform well. These are the negative thoughts and feelings which are running through our mind when we are about to procrastinate and put off something for the future. And that is exactly what we are going to realize in today's meditation. So just keep your eyes closed and keep breathing normally, a little deeper, a little slower. And just observe your own thoughts, students. You may not be procrastinating right now because you are meditating with me. But I want you to go back in time, go back into your past and analyze one particular situation where you actually procrastinated and put off something. Can you try to recall or recapitulate the feelings that were running through your mind at the time of procrastination in the past? You can pick any particular
particular situation that you want, something that you might still remember. What were your thoughts and feelings at that time, students? Weren't they the same thoughts that I just spoke about? Low self-esteem, feeling little less confident about yourself, feeling that you may not be able to perform well, feeling that somebody might make fun of you, feeling that somebody might try to put you down or feeling that you might end up putting yourself down by performing less, feeling that you may not be able to live up to your own standards and expectations. And all these negative feelings bogged you down so much that you eventually decided not to give it a shot and just procrastinated and moved on to something else. Just realize those feelings, observe those feelings. I know those are negative feelings. They are not good for you. They damage your self-esteem. They are not good for your self-confidence. But at the same time, during the course of this meditation, I also want you to realize and understand that you are not your body, my students. You are not even your mind. You are not even the thoughts that run across your mind. You are none of these. You are something completely different from all these. You are way beyond your body. You are way beyond your mind and your thoughts. You are a pure soul. You are a pure consciousness in this universe. Although sometimes I do understand that our thoughts and our feelings tend to bog us down. They tend to bother us, tend to disturb us. Sometimes, despite knowing that we are not our thoughts, we tend to attach ourselves to them. Our thoughts tend to associate themselves with us so strongly that they start bothering us. They start to intimidate us. They start to overwhelm us and they start disturbing our lives. They start to have an impact on our lives. Despite us understanding that we are not our thoughts, it happens because thoughts can sometimes be so powerful and so intimidating. But as long as you have this knowledge and realization that you are eventually not your thoughts, you will be good sooner or later. So just keeping your eyes closed, I want you to remember those thoughts again. The thoughts that were running through your mind when you procrastinated in the past. It could be your school assignment. It could be a sports, a sports related event, a match, a tournament, or maybe something at home. Maybe a public speaking contest. Maybe something you had to do in the assembly in front of a huge crowd. Whatever it might have been. There must have been a time in the past when you surely procrastinated. Don't tell me that you have never done it. You'll be utterly lying because I have done it. Teachers do it. Everybody in the school does it. Because all of us are human beings. All of us are in the same boat. It's just that teachers might do it a little less because they have more experience of life and they have learned from it. And you are still learning. But the end point is that trust me, all of us procrastinate every once in a while. So no big deal. It's okay. It's okay to procrastinate. Otherwise, how will we learn from our mistakes if we don't make them? So just re-observe the thoughts that went into your mind back then when you procrastinated something, whatever it was. And at the same time, I want you to also strictly remind yourself that, hello, I'm not these thoughts, okay? I'm just remembering them because Anukruti ma'am has told us to revisit them. But I am not my thoughts. So that's it. Remind yourself that. It is a cardinal truth of life. Universal fact of life. I can assure you of this much. Just keeping your eyes closed, breathing a little slowly, a little deeply, just revisit you, those thoughts no matter how good, bad or ugly they are, no matter how negative they are, it's okay because all of us go through the same thoughts of low self-esteem and self-doubt. Like I shared my own thoughts with you. 
all of us go through it just revisit them remembering at the same time that those thoughts do not define you your identity is not attached to those thoughts that's it now i want to introduce a fresh new perspective to all of you students have you ever realized that it is not actually the outcome of any activity that life is all about have you realized that life is all about the journey that we undertake to reach a certain destination it is never ever about the final destination but the journey towards it have you ever realized that have you ever thought about it if you have then awesome but if you have not then i am here to tell that to you today your life your life is not just the length of the time that you have lived students your life is not about the length of the journey that you have to cover just to reach one important destination it is never about the destination it is also not just the number of years that you have lived in this world it is not about the length of time that you have survived in this world it is about the depth it is about the depth of the time that you have lived on this planet earth it is about the depth it is about the quality of that time and not the actual length of that time so forget about the destination your life is about the depth and the quality of time spent on this planet and so life is all about this beautiful journey that you undertake and the destination is what it is that's it you don't have to worry about the destination after all it is what it is so you have you ever realized that when it comes to a task when it comes to a challenge when it comes to an assignment that has been given to you to finish have you ever realized that that task or that challenge is not about the outcome but it is about the journey or the action that you take if you have not realized it so far today through this meditation you must that is the truth of life after all it is the action which counts when you perform a task it is the action which counts when you undertake a challenge it is never about the outcome because the outcome is what it is and you have no control over it but what you do have a control over is your action and as human beings we have we have been designed we have been created by nature in such a way that we are made to enjoy that action we are made to relish that activity which we have to undertake to reach a certain outcome if you reach that outcome awesome if you don't reach that outcome it's okay because it was never in your control but what is in your control is your effort and action and nature designed us to enjoy that effort that we undertake nature designed us in such a way that we should enjoy the action that we take to reach a certain desired result but we may or we may not achieve that desired result if we do achieve that result wonderful nothing like it but if we still don't reach that desired result it's okay it's okay wherever the chips fall as long as you gave your 100% effort as long as you gave your 100% action to that challenge if you don't get the resu desired result then no problem you revisit your action you understand what the mistakes were you make those corrections and you try again you do that action all over again and you try and try and try 
until you succeed and you achieve that desired result. And that's what life is all about. Practice and practice and practice. Try and try and try until you succeed. So we human beings are designed to enjoy the action and not worry about that goddamn result. So if you have realized that now, which by now I am sure you have because all of you are young and bright and smart, keeping your eyes closed, I want you to repeat a few statements which I am going to say now. I enjoy taking action. I am in fact lucky to be in a position to be able to take that action because some of us are not. Some of us, even if we want to take an action, we don't have the time or the resources or the opportunity to take that action. Although you may argue with me by saying, ma'am, it's not about taking an opportunity always. It's also about making our own opportunities. Yes, I agree with you. It is all about making your own opportunities and not waiting for them to knock at your door. But some people are still not in a position in life to be able to take that action even if they want to for so many innumerable reasons. They may not have time at hand. They may not have certain vital resources at hand to be able to take that action or they may not have their health supporting them. Ill health can also be a deterrent. So I want you to just keep your eyes closed and repeat these messages to yourself. Repeat these positive affirmations to yourself. I enjoy taking action. I am lucky to be in a position to be able to take that action. And the result? <laughs> well, the result is what it is. I enjoy taking action. I am lucky to be in a position to be able to take that action. And well, 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 my friend, the result will be what it will be. And I have no control over it. But I will be happy as long as I am sure that I am giving it my 100%. And that's all that there is to it. That's all that counts. Just keep repeating these positive affirmations to yourself, keeping your eyes closed, breathing a little more slowly and a little more deeply and just carry on repeating these affirmations to yourself in your mind. And I'll be back shortly. Don't worry. Very nice. Now just keep your eyes closed and as I promised you, I'm back. How did that feel, students? Doesn't it feel good? I'm sure it does. It makes you feel so positive and charged and revved up, amped up with energy. It makes you feel all set and raring to go. Raring to go for your next task and your next challenge. 
suddenly you seem to be a different person altogether. Somebody who does not even realize what procrastination actually means. It feels great. It feels great when you feed yourself positive thoughts. It feels great when you feed yourself positive affirmations. And I will tell you that although you are not your thoughts, although you are way bigger and you are way beyond them, you are the consciousness which is much, much bigger in comparison to your thoughts. But what is the beauty of the power of thought? When you constantly feed yourself negative thoughts, you tend to become a weaker consciousness. When you feed yourself with positivity, positive thoughts, you become a powerful consciousness. Every time you feed your mind with negative thoughts, you become an individual that is weak, with a weak self-esteem. And every time you feed yourself with positive thoughts, you become a strong, powerful, more confident individual. So why don't we do that every day? Let us do that every day. So just one minute of positive thinking has transformed you and your mindset completely. And the same girl or the same boy who was procrastinating so regularly, so frequently in life has now become a boy or the girl who is raring to go who is raring to take, take charge of his or her life, who is raring to take action, who is raring to take control, who is raring to become a leader. And how wonderful is that? Although sometimes, let me tell you that although you are ready to be a leader now, you are still not a superpower. We are all human beings and even the best of us make mistakes sometimes. The best of us go through phases of self-doubt sometimes. There will still be times, students, when a particular task or a challenge will seem too big. There will be times when that task will still intimidate you or overwhelm you. This meditation is not a sure shot, 100% guarantee that, voila, from now on, you will not go through phases of self-doubt. Self-doubt can strike you anytime. It can happen to the best of us as all of us are human beings and we are born with our strengths and our weaknesses. But then life is a journey and life is a journey which is all about polishing our strengths and overcoming our weaknesses. It is a never-ending journey, my dear students. But what I want to tell you now is that every time, every time a task seems to be too big or Every time a task seems to be too intimidating or overwhelming or challenging, I want you to just adopt a strategy that I want to share with you. Let's just say that you have been given an assignment which is too big and it is constantly overwhelming you and you are constantly going through phases of low self-esteem and you are telling yourself that I'll not be able to live up to the expectation of my teacher. I'll not be able to live up to my own expectations or my parents' expectations. I just want you to tell yourself, well, it's okay. This task seems to be too big, but let me just give 20 minutes of my time to it. Let me just focus on it for 20 minutes. Just try to work on that task for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, give yourself a break for 5 to 10 minutes. If after those 5 to 10 minutes of break, you feel like carrying on with the task, wonderful. By all means, go ahead and carry on. If after the first 20 minutes, you don't feel like taking a break at all, by all means, carry on. Go full on and finish that task or that assignment completely, whatever it is. So give yourself that much time. If after those first 20 minutes of doing that task or approaching that task, you feel bogged down, you still feel overwhelmed, it's okay. Take a break, sit down and have a meditation. Take a deep breath in and a slow exhale. Do your breathing pranayam for five to 10 minutes 
or just take a short walk. Do something which you enjoy to do. Do some activity which makes you happy. And then after taking that break, trust me students, come back to the same task and try it again. So you want to keep trying that task over and over again for 20 minutes. And after every 20 minutes, you are free to go out and take your break for as long as you want. As long as you are coming back to the same task after taking that break. And sooner or later, you will be able to build up the confidence to finally accomplish that task. Because every time you try, every time you make a go, every time you make an attempt, you are telling your subconscious mind over and over again, you are feeding a positive message inside your subconscious mind over and over again. And what is that positive message? You are telling yourself that you are up for the challenge. You are telling yourself that you are ready to take up that challenge. Although you may not have the capabilities or the skill set yet to accomplish it. But as long as you are telling your subconscious mind that, hey, I have the self-esteem and I have the confidence to go for it, to give it a try every time life throws a challenge like this at me, as long as I have the confidence, I will be able to learn those capabilities. I will be able to acquire that skill set which is required to accomplish that particular task. This is the message which you are feeding inside your subconscious mind every time you actually make an attempt. Every time you make an attempt to accomplish that task. When you take an action, when you make an effort, when you take a physical action, when you make a physical effort, this is what you tell your mind every time. And what do you tell your mind? You tell your mind that despite not having the skill set, despite not having those required capabilities in the present moment, what you have is your self-confidence. What you have is a willingness to learn. What you have is a strong, unbeatable will, will to carry on, will to learn, will to make efforts again and again and again, will to just keep going for it without stopping, without bowing down to life's circumstances, without giving up. If you have that never say die attitude, then sooner or later, you will make the effort, you will put in the hard work to acquire the skill set which is required to finish and accomplish that task successfully. So just follow the 20 minute rule. No matter how big the task, no matter how overwhelming or challenging the task, just give it 20 minutes of your time. Because anything that you try to do for just 20 minutes, eventually stops seeming to be so big or so overwhelming. Because all of us, all of us can attempt to do something for just 20 minutes no matter how big or small, isn't it? Anything, even if I tell you to move Mount Everest today, you can at least try to move Mount Everest for 20 minutes. If you try to do it for 20 minutes, suddenly it stops being so overwhelming or so challenging, isn't it? Suddenly pushing Mount Everest or trying to move that Mount Everest stops looking so overwhelming to you, stops looking like a daunting task, stops looking like a huge task, in front of your eyes, if I tell you to attempt to do it for just 20 minutes. So adopt this 20 minute funda in your life and you will realize that you are beginning to procrastinate a lot lesser. Do any task for 20 minutes, take a break and then come back to it. If you naturally feel like coming back to it, wonderful! The task has already been accomplished. If you don't feel like taking a break also in the first place, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Go for it. You have already achieved your target. And if after those 20 minutes, you feel a little bogged down and a little low on that self-confidence, take a break. Meditate. Breathe in deeply. Breathe out slowly. Do a small pranayama. 
or come back to any of my guided meditations on YouTube anytime that you want. Just follow some of my meditations that help you to build more self-confidence and more self-esteem. You can go through the entire list of meditations that I'm posting onto YouTube for all of you on a daily basis. And some of my meditations in the past have been devoted entirely to building more self-esteem and self-confidence. Just pick on those, play them out, do that meditation once again with me, and then come back to that same task after taking that break. And trust me, you will feel a lot better. You will feel more confident at accomplishing that task. And overall, in general, all of you boys and girls of DRS will start realizing that, oh wow, suddenly you are procrastinating a lot lesser and your parents are more relieved and your teachers are happier. And basically everybody around you feels more happy and more joyous because you, as a person, as an individual, are also becoming more confident, filled with self-esteem and naturally happier. And when you feel more happy and more confident, by all means, naturally, inadvertently, you also tend to spread more happiness and more joy amongst all those around you. Having said that, you can just open your eyes now, but before you do that, with a gentle smile on your face, just shake out your body. Just shake out your body rigorously or you can rub your palms together just to get all your awareness and your consciousness back inside your entire body. And then whenever you are ready, you may just open your eyes. And my dear boys and girls, now you're all set, all prepared to take on the rest of your day. Stay at home, stay safe. Help out your parents with all the household chores and this applies to boys and girls both, alright? I keep repeating this reminder but at the cost of sounding boring and repetitive, yes, lockdown is a time to help with all the household chores, help out your parents, be of some service. Of course, take care of your assignments, finish them on time. Do not miss out on your live digital classes with your subject and class teachers and be good. God bless you. I love you all and I will see all of you tomorrow with once again a brand new meditation on a brand new topic. And of course, a little bit of pranayam, a little bit of breath work, which helps to keep all of us sane during this lockdown. I love you all. Bye-bye.